Hello, and welcome to Alex Toth in Depth. This is the show where we discuss Toth's work, his influence on comics, character design, and visual storytelling. This is Paul Fricke, cartoonist, comics professor, and Toth buff. In this episode, I'd like to introduce a new format called Deep Dive, where we uh, pick one of Toth's comics and analyze it uh, through the whole comic, uh, page by page, panel by panel. should mention that this deep dive format in this episode in particular is intended to be a visual experience and video-based, whereas many other uh, episode formats on this show are intended to be a podcast first uh, with video enhancements. This is the other way around. And of course, you're welcome to listen to this as a podcast on your own and then follow along perhaps with your own printed copy of the comic or or a digital uh, file of the story. For the first of these comics, I'd like to discuss a collaboration with Harvey Kurtzman uh, published by EC Comics called F-86 Saberjet. Now, for this uh, comic, you have a melding of the talents of two of the uh, giants of comics history, uh, Harvey Kurtzman and Alex Toth. Um, for EC Comics, uh, Kurtzman had created a, a, a couple different titles of war comics, Frontline Combat and uh, Two-Fisted Tales. Previously, EC Comics had been known as Educational Comics, after publisher Max Gaines died in a boating accident, his son William Gaines took over and changed the name to Entertaining Comics, which became their focus and intent starting in the early 50s. Now, with Kurtzman's line of comics uh, of the war tales, he really uh, had a very serious uh, intent and researched um, a lot these comics uh, for his stories and spent hours and hours at libraries making sure that he got the details and facts right as best he could and tried to play it straight down the line. Um, in many ways, what he did with his entertaining comics at EC were more educational than had, what had been done previously. Kurtzman, when he did this uh, comic, uh, was 29 years old, and Alex Toth, who had uh, just a couple years earlier, in 1950, started to establish himself as one of the best comics artists in the business. Um, and he, at the time uh, of drawing this comic, was, I believe, uh, 24 or 25. Uh, the, the photo here you're looking at is uh, from a couple years earlier. He was probably 21 at the time of this photo. Now, these two had uh, tremendous respect for each other and um, and both, uh, you know, treated their work uh, very seriously. They only collaborated on three comics, um, all of which uh, Kurtzman wrote, one called Dying City, then Thunderjet, which uh, Toth drew. Um, Dying City, Kurtzman had inked as well as uh, written uh, inking over Toth's pencils. And then this last collaboration, F-86 Saberjet, Toth drew. This was the last collaboration because they didn't exactly see eye to eye. Although Toth respected Kurtzman and, and his work and his instincts about how to tell a story, um, we'll get to it a little bit later, but Toth did certain things in the story that Kurtzman didn't love, and uh, Toth probably started to bristle uh, at the... Uh, control that Kurtzman had over everything, and um, it, it didn't work out after that. Um, so for F-86 Saberjet, you'll see a lot of different things going on. If you look at the entire story, um, you can see that there's a, not only a graphic treatment by Toth and then uh, meticulous layouts by Kurtzman, in terms of the rhythm and and uh, what's shown panel by panel, but also there seems to be a uh, color design uh, over the entire story. So it starts off with bright uh, yellow 
colors, uh, primary colors largely. And then halfway through the story, uh, the, a, the, uh, the jet is plunged into a cloud bank and uh, everything becomes dark. And this is really well put together and uh, put across um, in the color. And then you can see toward the end of the story, it becomes um, bright again. Uh, this is not as evident uh, when looking at the work uh, in black and white, although we will do some of both in reviewing and analyzing um, this comic. Now, again, Kurtzman planned his comics meticulously, and uh, layouts that we see here are not from this story, but from another of his war tales. And you can see panel by panel, he's kind of you know, composing every shot and figuring out what's going to go where and what the rhythms are. In, in the uh, bottom tier of this series, you can see that the uh, uh, the point of view we're, we're getting the reader is getting closer and closer to the um, uh, to the uh, characters in the story uh, in, in repeated uh, panels, one after another. And uh, Kurtzman did this a lot in his comics. Uh, and you can see him doing that in some cases here uh, in Saberjet. Now, F86 Saberjet, um, what is Kurtzman trying to do, and, and who is his audience? Uh, you know, comics at the time were uh, read by kids, but not only, they were read by families, um, you know, like, you know, funny animal comics and so on and so forth. And the Sunday funnies were prevalent and comics sold millions of copies per issue. Now, I don't know if, if the EC comics did, but comics sold a lot. Also, during this period uh, post-war, you had a lot of comics being uh, sold and bought and uh, sold to and bought and read by, uh, you know, 20-year-olds and, uh, and people in their 20s, young adults who uh, were serving or had served um, in the military. So uh, Kurtzman had access, I think, to a different kind of reader, uh, and he wanted to treat the material uh, seriously. Um, with this comic, he is saying right off the bat that he wants you to know what it's like to fly this jet. Um, so we not only get a panel where Toth is... Uh, you know, br pulling out all the stops in terms of a graphic treatment of, of planes, and he loved to draw planes. But then, if we look at the uh, bottom tier on the first page, uh, Kurtzman is telling us this is the Sabrejet, good ship. He's introducing us to the ship. And he actually says, you know, the newspapers can tell you some things, but not everything. You can you can get common knowledge somewhere, but he's letting you in into some special knowledge. And the point of view of the first shot on the bottom tier here uh, has that kind of voyeuristic uh, added perspective. We are seeing into um, the ship as if we're sitting on on the tarmac and looking up at the at the um, the pilot. Then in the second panel on the bottom tier, we are now in the cockpit. The point of view is from the uh, pilot. And we are now sitting right there seeing what the pilot would see. Uh, he says right here, I'll tell you what it's like flying one. And that's the sense you get. There's a particular thing about what comics can do. And this comic does it very well in using simple graphic, iconographic, and um, narrative uh, word and picture devices to get something and educate you and entertain you and get and uh, things across and communicate ideas to you that can't be done in the same way with another medium. Then in the next shot we see the pilot. So he's done a 180, and now we are we are we are basically the pilot. They've established that by the end of page one. Now on page two we see. Uh, everything in the air. We are now in the air with the uh, with the pilots, and we and he has joined the other um, the other planes. And I've shown you here a comparison of the black and white and the color, so we can see what the difference is between the two. And on the right, you can see Toth is using uh, black and white to great effect 
Um, and in the color version, you can see that that's kind of handling the mid-tones. Now, I think that the black and white version stands up very well and can be read. Uh, and in some cases, it's, it's preferable. And as I said earlier, the color design on this is very good. So um, it works well. And there's some things in the color that work better than in the black and white. Uh, in, in some cases, although most of the colors here are done in primary colors, occasionally there is a secondary color, uh, which I can either works well or I can find distracting. Now, in this second page, what do we have going on? Toth, although he's, you know, a lot of people say that he it was thinking mainly of panel by panel composition and just trying to tell the story, that he didn't think much necessarily about overall page con composition. There are some stories and pages, of course, well, this is you know, patently falls and he, he does, he designs great splash pages and is very, very aware of what's going on. But even if, if he's dealing with things panel by panel, you can see in this uh, diagram here that he's very con concerned about composition. Uh, there, he's introducing all kinds of angles for direction and you can see the angles on the top and the bottom are kind of bookending and couching and framing the entire page. This is repeated in the middle tier with more of the same angles. And then he's doing like in the very middle of the panel, uh, middle panel, middle page, middle of the page, he's got a, a shape that goes directly across that grounds the entire page as we're making the transition uh, of the early flight and then through the clouds to the uh, to uh, higher altitudes. Um, he's also introducing uh, different things that are going on with um, uh, curves. And that's, you can see in the uh, formation of the planes, or you can see it in the clouds or in the curve of the, uh, the glass of the uh, jet. So there's a lot of sophisticated stuff going on here in terms of composition. I'd like to point out also that some of this could become kind of static if Toth wasn't adding additional angles. So you can see with the lighter blue, he'll have the main thrust of, uh, of an angle of a series of planes, but then he will change the cant or angle slightly on a certain plane here or there. Uh, and this is also true the, in the very last panel where uh, the second plane is leading us off the page to, to, to turn the page and on another angle it creates movement uh, in a static medium. Uh, really nicely done. So pay attention to Toth's page compositions throughout. He was either thinking of it or he had great instincts uh, for it even while he was thinking of narrative and panel by panel. Uh, in the third page now we can see that the color is uh, playing a big part in terms of the yellow and and then the transition as we're in the blue in the lower portion of the uh, of the uh, page this page i think holds up well but it probably shows off a little bit better in black and white so if we look closely at the top tier you can see what's happening here uh, there are a series of MiGs, uh, enemy planes, in the distance. And what we are seeing is from the point of view of our jet pilot. The, the planes that he's seeing in the distance are just dots. And Toth doesn't worry about, you know, trying to, uh, you know, draw the heck out of these. They're just dots. The dots are going to suffice. And then he has dotted lines in the second panel. And by the third panel, we see that they've turned and they're coming directly at us. Now we, again, are in the point of view of the pilot. We are in the middle of the story and they're using these, you know, uh, Kurtzman has laid this out. So it's, you know, repeated panels, one after another next to each other. So the differences between each panel are plain and distinct and simply done. There is no reason to render this or try. I think maybe some other EC artist would have drawn the, the you know, lavishly the clouds in the background, which is would be beside the point. The point is the plane and the difference between the, the, the direction and how close they are to the viewer. And the clouds are only there to uh, support that frame it or, uh, 
or enhance it. In the middle tier, you know, Kurtzman is again teaching us. He's talking about the Lufberry Circle, which um, you're, the, the planes are kind of looping around each other. So it's a merry-go-round and you are not, um, uh, nobody can fire at each other. And, you know, in the first, look at the graphics of these two panels. You have this, you know, crazy angle with the pilot's head turned away from us. It's just, it's so simply drawn and well-designed and cropped in terms of the panel composition. We're feeling like we're in the middle of the action. Then in the next shot, we are outside the plane looking past the uh, the wing now with the MIG in the foreground and from that point of view. These are very graphic uh, panels and he's not worried about rendering or modeling or drawing the heck out of it. He's far more interested in communicating the movement, uh, the uh, the point of view of the pilot or us, and then the, um, the direction and movement of the planes in relation uh, to each other. In the next page, what we've got going on here is somebody is coming out of that uh, circle in the uh, latter portion. So somebody is uh, fired at somebody, and now we see the MIG in the middle of the panel is breaking up. So uh, in the first panel, they're, they're saying, you know, take after that MIG. In the second panel, uh, he says, go after him, and then they start shooting. So now we are halfway through the comic, in the middle of it, and what we're seeing is kind of incredible in terms of how this is told and rendered. You can see that it's even more clear in the black and white version of this comic uh, where Toth is rendering it in very simple terms. So in the first series of panels, we can see the uh, on the top tier, we can see the planes and how they're looping around and chasing each other. And then you see the four dots in the distance. In the second, we can see the attack happening. And the shooting starts happening in the middle panel. In the left panel, in this middle tier, you are seeing it right from the point of view of the pilot. Then we see the uh, reaction to the attack. Now, I think, I don't know, if I got this script... And we knew that fuel was, you know, gushing out from the last plane. I might be, you know, I might figure I should render that like with fluid, like with droplets or something. And Toth just doesn't do that. He renders this with just a series of dots. It's kind of how you'd really view it. And things would just be spattering up against you, uh, against your windshield. And... I just don't think most artists would attack it this way, but it is clearly communicated. Now, if you're looking at just the artwork on its own, you might be a little confused as to what's going on. Um, but when it's married with word and picture, a Kurtzman's words and text, and he's not overwriting this text at all, as happens in some EC comics of the time, um, then it's communicating very well uh, what's happening panel by panel. So in the first panel, from the point of view of the pilot, we see the MiG has popped his brakes. And then in the second panel, the captain uh, of the pilot's uh, group of planes has popped his brakes as well and is near the MiG. And we're still seeing this from the point of view of our pilot. In the third panel, now our pilot and us are in the middle of the frame and shown in the frame. And he is, we are upside down, which sets up what's going to happen the next two panels of the story. And then what we see in the last panel is that they, uh, the, our pilot has gone into a cloud bank. Now in the black and white version, that's just a few little lines. In the color version though, uh, we are enveloped in a deep blue, you know, purplish blue. And this is where the color uh, comes across very well. Now, you can see that, that blue envelops the whole page except for um, a little bit of white and a little bit of hot yellow and orange uh, where an explosion, uh, you know, where burning and then an explosion occurs. Um, and boy, these panels, these are really well done. And this is just a nice 
uh, merging the talents of the two guys because you got to figure that Toth's um, following a, a tight script by Kurtzman, but he's bringing him something of his own to it. Uh, so we see the uh, top uh, tier panels, and this is a great panel on the left. It's really simple. It's really nice. We've got the smoke trail. We've got burning fuel. And, you know, if you have that cloud coming up a little higher, it might make for a more exciting um, composition. But because it doesn't quite go up as high in the panel, what we're tracking, what we follow, and what we focus on is the plane. This is true in black and white or in color. Then the trail goes off a little further in the next panel. Um, and then... Uh, you know, the plane is a little further and closer, uh, further away from us and closer to the exploding plane. And, uh, and then we see the explosion. In the middle panels, now that he's all alone and he hears only the noise of the engine, we are enveloped in that cloud bank with the jet pilot. And again, what better way to uh, illustrate what's going on here than just a tiny plane in this vast <laughs> sea of color. The negative space in these two panels in the middle tier are just incredible. And there's no extra rendering or modeling or anything that has to be drawn here. Uh, this is where we see that Toth is not an illustrator, where I think a lot of EC uh, artists were. And, you know, very good and did, did great comics and followed Kurtzman's layouts as well. But Toth is, uh, is a storyteller here, and he's collaborating with another great storyteller. And, you know, we don't need to show off in, our, in every panel. We can pull back and, and just get the idea across like he does in these two panels. In the last panels here, now, Kurtzman in the, in the text is talking a lot about the instruments I suppose he could have shown the instruments that we were seeing, that the jet pilot is seeing, and that's not what he's showing. Now, some people might think that Toth should have shown the instruments and shown that point of view. I don't see how we can blame Toth for that. I think that's a Kurtzman call. What Kurtzman is more interested in is the pilot's reaction to what he's seeing on the instruments and then how he is um, following what the instruments are telling him. So what we're seeing in this panel is the hand on the control. And then in the next two panels, we see just a slight tilt and positioning of the pilot in the panel. So we see the movement, and that's getting across the, uh, uh, the feeling of the pilot. Now, the, the whole idea of this portion of the story is that you have to trust your instruments because when you are flying, you think that you're right side up when you're upside down and vice versa. So you think that you'll be, you'll be going great and straight up and you can crash into the ground. So you have to trust the instruments, especially when you have uh, no visibility. Some of this kind of material is handled in other places. If you take um, a movie like, I believe it's The First Man uh, by Chazelle, a movie, um, that has a very visceral kind of feeling where you are in the plane and you're there with Armstrong when he's doing uh, early flights with the plane and then in the uh, uh, flying to the moon. And you're in the middle of that and everything's shaking and, and you, you hear, you know, metal scraping against each other and bolts coming off and, and rattling and all kinds of stuff going on. It's a very visceral experience. Um, but Armstrong in that, uh, in that uh, position has to think it through. But I don't know... If you get that idea when you're watching a movie like those sequences in The First Man, I don't think you, you get an idea of the visceral uh, 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 feeling of that, but I don't think you get the full idea of what it's like to fly it. This uh, medium in comics and this story does a better job at it. And you start to feel that with a simple uh, change of the positioning of the character within the panel, and that is definitely in the layouts of Kurtzman, you get the... To, to feel that along with the pilot. We are uh, in his shoes. And the next page, oh, this is a black and white version of that. And I just wanted to isolate on this because, um, you know, we're not seeing a lot of rendering and feathering going on in Toth's uh, work here. It's stripped down, it's black and white. There's just a few dots here and there, but there's plenty of detail. And, you know, you, you have the sense that he's researching a lot, too, to make sure he's getting 
um, all of the details right on what the uh, pilot is wearing. It, it's really nicely done. Now, this is the portion of the story where Kurtzman and Toth uh, didn't see eye to eye, uh, and Toth handled it a different way than Kurtzman would have liked. Now, again, I don't blame Toth for this exactly, because I think what he did worked. Um, now, in this sequence, we could show instruments because he's referring to the instruments in this page, in the first panel, or, and, and all the way through this sequence. But this is all in the layouts by Kurtzman. This is all there. He's worked that out. All the positioning, the, the cropping, and the positioning, the slight changes of the position of the pilot upside down, panel by panel, that for sure was in the layouts by Kurtzman. And we don't have them as far as I know, but you got to figure that's there. We can see from other uh, Kurtzman layouts that that's got to be the case. But, you know, Toth's great sin in, uh, to Kurtzman was that he blacked out the figure. Um, now, I think this adds to this disorientation um, of the pilot and hence us in figuring it out. And also, uh, what is happening is as we see that, we are focused instead not only on the disorientation, but the changes, the minor changes in the positioning of the figure, the angle as he's changing within that and then starts to uh, move in the lowest uh, of these panels. Um, I think we would be if this were rendered, if we saw the face, we would be thinking more about how that pilot is feeling and how that specific pilot that we're, we're reading about is feeling. Instead, with this blacked out, with this crop the way it is, we're feeling it. It's not like we're reading about a pilot. We are the pilot. And, and that is something you can't get the same feeling of in another medium. Now you can see the color version of this page works very well where we are transitioning out of the middle blue section, the cool colors, and out of the fog bank, and then we see the plane, the, the saber jet, fly out of the bank and into a sea of yellow. There's some orange there, there's a little bit of blue that transitions us into the next uh, page, uh, but this is a very effective use of color and open space. This is a really, really well-known page in comics history. And why do we know it? <laughs> why do we know it? We know it because it's so graphic. We know it because it's uh, it conveys what it's trying to get across so well, uh, because it's so stark. And look at the use of negative space throughout. Uh, there's no uh, a misunderstanding what this page is about. You can look at it in a moment and know the pilot is disoriented and then is out of the cloud bank. I really like the way this is done. Um, and uh, uh, I don't think there's anybody to blame in this sequence. I think they both did a great job. And again, Kurtzman didn't work with Toth again after this because he blacked all those figures out and took it too far. But I'm sure glad Toth did. And I'm glad this collaboration between the two of them exists. Uh, and we can see, you know, just how powerful the empty space is in the last panel of that page and how enveloping that yellow is. What a relief it is to come out of that cloud bank and all that blue uh, to, uh, to get released. And again, the use of the yellow and orange early in the story sets this up for a big color payoff. Now, again, if this is in black and white, um, then we get the same feeling. Uh, in regards to negative space. Now for the last page, uh, pretty simple, right? Uh, the uh, conflicts are over, he's out of the cloud bank, and they're just wrapping things up. So they're communicating. And you see, you know, the, the direction, and all the way through the story, keep that in mind. What is the direction of the panel, of, of, of the objects and planes in the panel? Sometimes it's leading us to um, the next panel, and, and creating the momentum. And sometimes it's going against the grain when it's trying to uh, uh, tell us about characters or planes turning around or uh, a struggle that they're having. Um, here, we have an open panel. We see a cant of the plane as it's moving down and both planes in the second panel are moving down. And then we see just half the panel and almost a yin yang panel in panel two where the black smoke is just enveloping um, the lower right. Now we cut to the ground in the third panel and that now we're right in the, in the thick of it. 
and we see that the MiG has uh, been downed and is aflame, and we see the star that is used earlier on that we can you know, know what's what. And you can see there's two little dots up in the air that are our planes. Um, they circle around in panel four, and they verify what's going on. And here's panel one and two. I think these panels in the middle work better in black and white, um, personally. I think they read better, and some of the green used in those uh, is not as effective as it could be. Um, and then the last panels, uh, again, a group of panels. Now, this is really simply done, and you know it's in his layouts. It's in Kurtzman's layouts, but Toth is... You know, he does things with the simplicity of this with the planes. Look at the positioning of the planes. Now, this this series of panels could be uh, read as a single uh, background of just a bank of clouds. It doesn't quite work that way, but it does have that effect um, where the planes are just moving across the entire vista, and then they've just broken it up panel by panel into three separate sections. I prefer to think of this and read it more as if we are kind of panning over or turning with uh, the planes and kind of looking into the distance, almost turning to our right to view them going off. And you see the positioning of the planes. First, they are, you know, wings perpendicular to the ground. And then we see a slight turn in the second panel. And then we see that they've straightened out, you know, uh, parallel to the ground, smaller and flush, and really nicely framed in the in the clouds. Really, this even though it's simply done, it has a great feeling and effect. And this is a great way to go out um, of this uh, story uh, again in a cloud of white and uh, blue sky. Uh, what a classic tale! F eight eighty six saber jet. There's more I could say about this. One wouldn't figure I could, but. Um, there's a lot of little decisions that Kurtzman and Toth have made throughout this entire seven-page story that really help, you know, communicate what they're trying to get across. I think comics is just a special medium where it can teach, it can instruct, uh, it can communicate, it can entertain, and it's because it's an immersive medium and an interactive medium, we are reading, but we are reading word and picture. And we're filling in blanks between what's going on in the panels, and we are in the story. It's really remarkable what they've done here, and I wish more comics would do things like this. Um, and again, they did this, you know, almost 70 years ago, and it still holds up uh, to the test of time. Uh, so, you know, read it, read it again, study it, uh, and, uh, and pass it on. One of the greatest comics in the history of comics. And now that's all the time we're giving to this episode. This again is Paul Fricky for the Alex Toth In-Depth Show. Comments, questions, or compliments, please email paul at opaulo.com or on Instagram, follow daily posts at Alex Toth In-Depth. Uh, follow, like, and share there. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Just type in Alex Toth in depth. Leave a quick positive review. Tell your friends. There's also enhanced video version of the show on YouTube, so subscribe to that channel so you don't miss an episode. Until next time, go with Toth. And remember, to add to the truth only subtracts from it. <laughs>